Hello and welcome to this new session of online lesson. Without further ado, let's begin. Today we're going to look at computer architecture, fetch, execute, cycle. Now in the fetch, execute, cycle, we're going to look at what is the von Neumann architecture. The von Neumann architecture uses a single processor. It follows a linear sequence of fetch, decode, execute operation for the sequence of instruction which make up the program. In order to do this, the processor had, has to use some special registers. And a register is simply a location that can store data in our processor or in the computer in itself. Typical processor diagram. So a typical processor is shown below. The central processing contain the arithmetic and logic unit, which is also known as ALU or the arithmetic unit, and the control unit. So you can see that we have the ALU over here and the control unit over here. And each of these units have registers, such as the PC, CIO, accumulator, MAR, and MDR, which are found in the processor. This is a very simplified model of a computer processor architecture. A real processor is likely to have many general purpose registers. So here we have few registers that have been described to you in the diagram, PC, CIO, MAO, MDO, accumulator, but we can have more of these in a real processor. The ALU, arithmetic and logic unit, is a single general purpose register where all values are held when they are processed by arithmetic and logical operations. Arithmetic operations are those that add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers. Logical operations involve comparing binary patterns and making decision. It should be noted that the accumulator is a register inside the ALU as shown before. The control unit fetches instruction from memory, decodes them and synchronizes the operation before sending signal to other parts of the computer using the control bus. It should be noted that the program counter and the current instruction register are in the control unit. The memory data register and the memory address register are in the processor. And the above diagram that we have shown earlier shows how the data is transferred from one register to the other. Bus. A bus is a pathway along which data can travel. The following are the three types of bus present inside a typical processor. So we have the data bus. This is used to carry data that needs to be transferred from one hardware component to another. The address bus. The address bus carries the address of the main memory location or input of the device which is about to be used. The address bus sends address value in one direction, that is from the processor to the memory address register. And lastly, we have the control bus. The control bus is used to send control signal from the control unit to other components of the system. Bus width. The bus width is the amount of bits that can be carried in a bus. The size of a bus width can vary from 8 bits wide to 64 bits wide. As the size of the bus width increases, the amount of information that can be processed by the CPU also increases. Therefore, the wider, that is, a large size bus width, the bus, the better will be the performance of the computer system. Clock speed. The clock speed, also known as a clock rate, is a speed at which a microprocessor executes instructions. Every computer contains an internal clock that regulates the rate at which instructions are executed and synchronizes all the various computer components. The CPU requires a fixed number of clock ticks, that is clock cycles, to execute each instruction. The faster the clock, the more instruction the CPU can execute per second, and therefore the better will be the performance of the computer system. Clock speed are expressed in megahertz or gigahertz. Special purpose registers used to execute a program. So as we have seen earlier in the typical diagram of a CPU, these are the different special registers that are used in the CPU. We have the program counter, the current instruction register, the memory address register, the memory data register, the index register, and the status register. The program counter is used to store the address of the next instruction to be fetched. The memory address register stores the address of the next instruction that is needed. This address is obtained from the program counter. 
the memory data register stores the contents, that is, what is found, of the address that is found in the memory address register. So what happens in the memory data register is that whatever we have in the address that we have in the MAR is stored in the MDR. The CIR, the current instruction register, stores the contents of the memory data register. That is an instruction that is about to be executed. The index register is used to determine the address of an operand. And the status register contains information about the state of the processor. It should be noted that the status register in traditional processor design include at least three central flags, that is zero, carry, and overflow. The fetch decode execute cycle. A program is a set of instructions stored in a sequential block of main memory. The following sequence of steps describe how the fetch execute decode cycle is executed. At the end of the cycle, the sequence is repeated until the program terminates. So the fetch decode execute cycle is broken down to three parts. So we have firstly the fetch part. So the fetch part, what we are going to do, we are going to copy the address that is in the program counter into the memory address register. Afterward, we are going to increment the PC, that is the program counter, load the instruction that is in the memory address register given by the MAR into the memory address register, and then we are going to load the instruction that is currently in the MDR into the current instruction register. This concludes the fetch stage. Second part is the decode stage. The decode stage, what we need to do, we need to identify the type of addressing being used by the instruction. If the address is a direct address, we are going to load a copy of the address into MAR and retrieve the content of the address. If the address is an index address, then we are going to add the address to the content of the index register and copy the result to MAR, retrieve the content of this address. And after this, we are going to decode our instruction. And the last part of this cycle is the execute stage, where we are going to see if the instruction is a jump instruction. Then load the address operand into the PC, that is a program counter. Go back to step one, that is a step one that we have in the fetch stage. Execute the instruction if this is not the case, and go back to step one to continue on with the cycle. So additional notes for the fetch decode execute cycle. The memory data register is used whenever data are transferred from a central processing unit to the main memory, or vice versa. Thus, the next instruction is copied from memory into MDR and then copied from MDR into CIO. Once an instruction has been fetched, the control unit can decode it and decide what has to be done. This is the execute part of the X cycle. If it is an arithmetic instruction, it can be executed and the cycle restarted as a PC already contains an address of the next instruction. However, if the instruction involves jumping to an instruction that is not the next in sequence, the PC has to be loaded with a new address. This address is the operand of the current instruction, hence the address part is loaded into the PC and the next cycle started. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, click on the, click on the subscribe button. Leave a comment on how the channel can be improved and click on the thumbs up. Until then, see you guys next time.